Hi friends, welcome to the sixth video on the series of mathematical logic. This video will introduce you to the concept of inconsistency method of solving from the concept of theory of inference. There are going to be five different methods in which a problem on theory of inference can be solved and we have seen or covered like a direct and indirect method in our prior videos. So this video will be a continuance of the concept of theory of inference and the methodology to be covered in this video will be inconsistency method. Come on, we will move on to see what is meant by inconsistent premises. A set of premises or formulas h1, h2 up to hn is said to be inconsistent if their conjunction implies a contradiction. So if all the links together lead us to a faulty answer called as a contradiction, then we say that the given set of premises h1 up to hn are going to be inconsistent to one another. On the contrary, if it is not going to be inconsistent, then we say it to be consistent in nature. So the point to note over here is in the remaining of the problems like direct and indirect method along with the hypothesis we will be also having something called as like what is going to be the conclusion we will have to arrive at. But over here since it is known that the conclusion is either false when it is going to be inconsistent or true if it is going to be consistent the conclusion will not be directly given to you in the question. So keep this as a hint over here when the conclusion is directly not present then you will have to check whether you have been asked to prove that it is going to be inconsistent or consistent and accordingly prove it to be a false or a true over here for the given set of hypothesis. So keep in mind the conclusion will not be provided explicitly for this third method of inconsistency. Come on we will now move on to apply it to a word problem. Show that the following premises are inconsistent. So they have just showed us show that it is going to be inconsistent and they have just given us the set of premises alone. So notice that this set of premises is going to just lead us to the quantity called as inconsistency. So the final answer we will have to arrive at is going to be false. So there will be no separate conclusion C which has been provided to us. Now we will see or we will check on what are going to be the quantities available for our sentences. If Jack misses many classes through illness, then he fails high school. If Jack fails high school, then he is uneducated. If Jack reads a lot of books, then he is not uneducated. Jack misses many classes through illness and reads a lot of books. So these are going to be the set of premises which have been given to me. To convert them into logical uh, statements, first I need to form my propositions. So what are going to be the propositions now? Jack misses many class through illness. Let this be the proposition P. So that let P stand for Jack misses many classes through his illness okay now moving on next what is happening next he fails high school so you must not write he fails high school rather the proposition must be denoting the subject over here jack fails high school moving on next what happens and if he jack fails high school he is uneducated again Coming don't write uh, R is E is uneducated rather write Jack is uneducated uneducated and furthermore and uh, what does he do Jack reads a lot of books so let that be the next premise P Q R and S Jack reads a lot of books and he is an uneducated is already been covered classes through illness is already been covered reads a lot of book is going to be already covered so for now we will move on to creating what are going to be my hypothesis h1 the first hypothesis we notice that there is an if part and there is a then part so the first line given to us is a going to be a conditional statement which is going to be the if part and which is the then part 
Jackmus's many class through illness is denoted by P. So we write it as if P, then he fails high school is given by Q. So the first proposition over here, uh, sorry, first uh, premise over here will be H1, which is given by if P, then Q. Moving on next, hi, H2, the premise number 2, if again there is an if part, there is a then part which shows that it is a uh, conditional statement if Jack fails high school. So if Q, then he is uneducated is going to be given by R. So if Q, then R forms my second premise. The third premise, again an if statement, if Jack reads a lot of book, then he is not uneducated reads a lot of books reads a lot of books is given by the proposition called as s if jack reads a lot of books then he is not uneducated over here there is a word called as not so uneducated is denoted by r not uneducated is denoted by negation of r if s yes, then negation of r and the last one h4 is going to be jack misses many class through illness and reads a lot of books there is no if and then but rather the first statement jack misses many class through illness is nothing but my p and now over here we notice one more type of conjunction which is present which is given by and so what happens over here is it is going to be an um, compound statement which is being connected using the connective called as and and how to use the connective and and is denoted by a conjunction symbol p and reads a lot of books reads a lot of book is given by s so the fourth one will be p and s so my given set of hypothesis are going to be if p then q if q then r if s then negation r and a p and s making use of these four quantities now I need to show that the following premises are inconsistent. So these four of the quantities have to lead me to a conclusion C which has to be F. This is what we stated. The problem doesn't give you what is going to be the conclusion directly to you. So it is like a hidden point. What we need to do is if it is inconsistent then the conclusion to be arrived is going to be false. Now let us move on to solve these hypotheses and get the result as false. Now we are ready to start our session with the table. Get your serial number, get your statement and get the rule. Right, step 1, I am introducing the fourth premise P and S. So this is going to be my rule P which directly pulls in and premise into the derivation next i know that whenever i have a a and b i can just use the law of simplification to pull your p outside separately and s outside separately p and s implies p by your rule t of 1 and you call it by the name of simplification so now I have now introduced a new formula for you to memorize for if we have a P and S then one of it can be separated as a P individually using the rule of simplification. Now let me introduce the second hypothesis sorry hypothesis number one in the next position as if P and Q. So this is going to be my rule P. Now a P and a if P then Q will lead me to a Q. So this is going to be my rule T of step number 2 and step number 3 using modus ponens. Now step number 5, a formula related with Q. So let me introduce hypothesis number 2. So it is going to be if Q then R. So this is going to be pulling in the hypothesis inside the derivation. Hence you name it as rule P. Again you can notice that there is a Q and a if Q then R which will lead us to an R. So this is going to be by rule T of step number 4 and 5 again by the rule of modus ponens. Now the quantity related with your R is going to be my hypothesis number 3 let it in rope minute S yes, then negation R. So you have this to be roped in as 
uh, rule p what you have over here is r over here we have a negation r so let us try to flip it and we know that on flipping the negation gets introduced to both sides of it so negation of negation r will make it as r and then it is going to be negation s so this is going to be your rule t of your step number 7 and you call it as contra positive now moving on i have a r over here and i have a r going to negation s over here a uh, p and a p going to q will infer as a q so uh, r and an r going to negation s will infer a negation s for us so this is going to be my rule t of step number 6 and 8 and this is nothing but my modus ponens i have a negation s now i need to keep in mind the final conclusion to be derived is going to be false for which i need to have the negation of an element i know that i have been given with p and s and there is going to be an s over here like how i have separated p from a p and s using simplification in the next step i can also separate an s from over here p and s using my rule t of your step number one and simplification simplification now what can we do is we can club this s and negation s together in our next step s and negation s together can be combined using your rule t of this was obtained from the steps number 9 and 10 9 and 10 using conjunction so whenever i have a p i have a q i can rewrite it as p and q that's how we got your s and negation s and i know that whenever we take the intersection of any two element and its complement the intersection is going to be null set and in logics this is going to stand for false s and negation of s is going to be false going to be your rule t of your step number 11 negation law okay and hence i have arrived at false which is going to be my conclusion and what does it say this says that the given set of hypotheses are in consistent hence we conclude this problem we'll move on with one more problem of the kind to get accustomed to the inconsistency show that if p then q if p then r a q then negation r and p are going to be inconsistent let me open my hypothesis number one if p then q hypothesis number two if p then r hypothesis number three if q then negation r hypothesis number four is going to be p the conclusion is going to be inconsistent inconsistent means i need to find it as false so this is going to be my quantity let me drop in my hypothesis p over here rule p and a quantity related with it if p then q so it is going to be my rule p again a p and a if p then q gives me a q using your rule t step one step two modus ponens now let me open in a um, hypothesis related with this so let me give it as q then negation r so this is going to be my rule p a q and a q then negation r will give me a negation r so this is going to be my rule t from my step 3 and step 4 of modus ponens the last quantity which is related to r is going to be my step 6 if p then r so now this is going to give me rule p because i am roping in a quantity which is already available now again we notice that a p and a p going to r this together will lead me to an r so this is going to be my rule t from my step 1 and my step 6 using modus ponens now i notice that there is going to be a negation r and a quantity called as r in my next step let me combine this r and your negation r using conjunction so this is going to be rule t of my step number 5 and 7 
so 5 and 7 using conjunction and now we have the final result of an element and the negation of the element is going to be false or a contradiction which is given by rule t of your step number 8 which is the negation law so once we have derived f f what did we conclude we conclude that the given set of hypothesis are inconsistent hence the proof i hope the problems on inconsistency are going to be clear please ping me if you have any doubts on it in the comment section happy learning keep learning thank you very much